So John, you were saying that rye is going crazy. Everyone. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. The, the straight rye whiskeys in the states right now it's it's uh, very popular and increasing, but it's it's crazy right now. Are people drinking it just neat on the rocks? Drinking neat, and and I uh, I think a lot of it is um, from just you know those the the old traditional cocktails you know, like like the uh, old fashioned in, in Manhattan's where traditionally you'd use a rye whiskey in those, and mm -hmm. I think that's really driving what the growth really. Let me say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because people are having a lot of variations in old fashioned now. Mm -hmm. That's certainly one thing we noticed. Lots of different flavors. There's right. even like lots of different syrups and fruits going on in right. there as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's sometimes old fashions you you would never even think it was an old fashioned. There's some some bars, especially back in St. Louis. There's one bar, uh, Gamlin. They've got a really good old fashioned, but to be honest, it doesn't taste anything like an old fashioned. It's just it's so sweet. It's got so much fruit and so much sugar in it. It's it's good, but it's it's a uh, not really a traditional old fashioned. So tell us one thing that people wouldn't know about bourbon. One, one thing. Little, one thing that people may not know may, about bourbon. May not know about bourbon is that bourbon uh, does not have to be made in Kentucky. A lot of people think that bourbon has to come from Kentucky. Um, it has to come from anywhere in, in the United States. There's a whole set of regulations it has to follow, but it, it doesn't have to come from Kentucky. But we like to say that all the good bourbon does come from Kentucky. <laughs> Can you let people know the difference between bourbon and straight bourbon? Well, bourbon uh, just has to meet the guidelines. It has to be at least 51% mm -hmm. corn. has to be distilled less than 160 proof in, in a, a charred new oak barrel uh, at no less than one hundred, no more than 125 proof. Uh, the aging, it, 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 there's no, there's no uh, minimum requirement in aging other than it has to just touch the inside of, the, of that barrel. Wow. So as long as it goes in that barrel and it just touches it, and you can pour it right back out. That's bourbon. It's going to be crappy bourbon, but it, it'll be. But you can call it bourbon. Yeah. Straight bourbon. That word "straight" means that it has been aged for a minimum of two years. Okay, that's the difference. And so, what we're drinking now, I have in front of me the bottle. It's a Rebel Yell Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, forty yep. cent by volume. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to tell us about this particularly? So this one, this is our weeded bourbon recipe. Uh, traditional bourbon uh, mash bills are made with rye. They'll be you know at, at least fifty one percent corn. Then the secondary or flavoring grain would be rye, and then your barley malt uh, for the enzymatic for the conversion of the starch to sugar. Uh, this mash bill, dating back to the mid eighteen hundreds. Uh, is a weeded bourbon mash bill. So instead of rye, you have the wheat. So you got a little bit more of a creamy mouthfeel of this. Uh, a lot of people think that the wheat is making it sweeter, and it is a little bit sweeter, but it's really because the wheat is kind of going neutral during maturation in the barrel and allowing the sweetness from the corn to come through. Whereas a, a traditional rye mash bill, that rye is a very robust, very powerful grain, very spicy, and that kind of masks masks that uh sweetness from the corn a little bit whereas that wheat just lets that sweetness flow through so this is a very sweet creamy full-bodied mouthfeel bourbon mm -hmm. yes, nice. and what's rebel yell what's the story behind that mm -hmm. well rebel yell that was uh originally this bourbon was made and, and, it, and it said it was basically created for the deep south Back in the, in the states, uh, Rebel Yell was the the, the cry of the, the Confederate soldier back then. Uh, we have changed that aspect of what this brand means to where now it's it. We really the Rebel Yell that we kind of think of it as the uh, the inner rebel in you. Let, let that come out and you know be your own self, be independent, be you know something that you know that you're just not conforming. That's what Rebel Yell stands for. Are you a rebel? I like to think so sometimes. Can you, can you yell for us? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question, and not necessarily related to this bourbon in particular, but people cook with wine. Mm -hmm. Do people ever cook with bourbon? Yes, absolutely. I do all the time. Okay. Yeah. How do you do it? I love being creative. That, that's one of the things, I mean, uh, when I first started with this company, I was their director of R&D, and I actually still am, but I'm you know more with the distillery now. But I love creating, and I love using bourbon. I, I mean, I've done... Uh, marinades for uh, beef and pork marinades uh, with bourbon. Uh, chili is awesome. You just put it, put about a cup of bourbon in and let it, the bourbon just cook in there. And you know the alcohol all just cooks right out, but the mm -hmm. flavor just stays in there and it's it's incredible. Oh, Colin had chili for lunch. We should have put some. Uh, there you go. Which we <laughs> picked up the package beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So lots of variation then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if there's one cocktail that you could tell the people listening to go and try, other than drinking this straight, yep. with and it does have that wonderful wheaty element to it as well. Right. It has that shine, shine, so shine through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What Sweet. cocktail would you be telling people to go and make? Hmm. With this, I would, uh, I mean, really a, a, the, a Manhattan. I, it is, and I that kind of seems odd to say that a weed, sweeter bourbon would, would go with a more traditional straight rye whiskey based cocktail but uh, if you try this in a Manhattan it just works it does it's really good yeah I'm, when I when I talk at the distillery about this and mm. I reluctantly describe it as like the beginning or a beginner's mm. bourbon like if you're brand new this is the one you want to start with you don't want to start out with a high rye uh, mm. that, that's just going to be bold in your face this one and we get a lot of first timers come through the distillery they're yep. usually you know we say 75% of the people that come through the door actually want to drink the whiskey the other 25 percent are being drug through but we start them off with this one and mm. it they it's very well received it's yeah, good that you I notice think. that because i think a, a lot of people out there create whiskey specifically for those who are you know not necessarily professionals but seasoned within the whiskey right. world mm-hmm. there's not many people who are specifically creating a starter whiskey for right. people who are thinking about entering into this world a high, right. a high class yeah, yeah. yeah. quality yes yeah. 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 yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. exactly Thank you very much indeed. It's really nice to meet you. Cheers. This is really easy to drink. Uh